My friends, one of the videos I wanted to do for a really long time is pinpointing what it is about the metal bands that we listen to or hard rock or wherever you want to classify it. What is the common denominator that we have across the genre? We think about bands like Bring Me the Horizon, Linkin Park, Sleep Token, Spirit Box, even Issues. The thing that all these bands have in common, besides being absolutely massive at one point or another, is the fact that they used a certain type of distorted synth sound throughout their career. And I think that sound design is extremely important when it comes to these type of bands. And another thing that I want to mention about metal and heavy music is distortion being used in every facet. That's whether we're adding distortion to drums, guitars, to bass, why would it be any different when we get into the world of synthesizers? And if we listen to anything like Numb from Linkin Park, or we listen to Throne from Bring Me the Horizon, or we listen to any type of synth lead really in heavy music, they're typically distorted. It only makes sense, right? So we're gonna be going through a bunch of examples of recreating this stuff, and then adding a little bit of that heat saturation with JST's new plugin, JST Heat. So. Let's have a lot of fun with that. But what's happening guys? Miami here with JST and I've been a big fan of sound design my entire life. Even when I was younger listening to R&B and stuff, but it really hit me, of course, during Hybrid Theory with Linkin Park. I think it makes sense to kind of start off there. And it doesn't really matter whether you're Mr. Han and you're using a Roland or a Korg, or you're Dan Bronstein writing with Spirit Box and you're using Spectrasonics Omnisphere or Keyscape. He also likes to use like Serum and a bunch of things like that. So regardless of the tool that you're going to be using or that you have at your disposal, this will give you an idea and understanding of where you should head. So let's start off by getting into Linkin Park's crawling. You could kind of start with a square wave oscillator or maybe like a triangle. Either one of those, you know, with the right effects will get you to what you want to do. All right, so we're going to jump right into crawling uh, Linkin Park. You know, shout out to Mr. Han and all that. Linkin Park was one of my favorite bands growing up. It's kind of what got me started into heavier music. I'm sure that's the same for you guys, and the synth sounds really helped get us there, so. We're starting off with a simple square saw. Um, they have a couple here. I prefer the first one. And it's really ear-piercing, like seriously. So we're going to add some EQ to this. Cutting off the, you know, lows and highs and little bump here and uh, dip down here. But you could hear before and after. It's tolerable, but what we all came for, the distortion, that's what's going to get us there. Because if you listen to it without any. glitching a little bit out there um and now a little bit more jst eq to calm that high and down again and howard benson vocals we're just going to use the echo in the space here uh and that's where we end up um got there pretty quickly and this is what it was with just a square And that's all it takes. And you can create synths from some of your most inspiring stuff in just a matter of seconds. It's really easy. But distortion is really what brings this stuff to life. And if you didn't know that, uh, you should definitely be trying to do that in your future productions. It was actually not that hard recreating that Linkin Park one. You know, you just have to go through, mess with the parameters, hit all the bells and whistles. And there's a bell I have to make sure that you guys hit that notification bell, hit that subscribe button. And of course, give the video a like if you're enjoying it so far. Transition game is still crazy, but nothing makes transitions better than synth sounds. So let's get back into that. I think that that came out sounding pretty awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys realized that bit of distortion that was on there in the original, 
And it's really easy getting that kind of sound when you're using a plugin like JST Heat. It's really helpful. For those that didn't try it before or didn't know about it, just head to the description below and you guys can check that out and maybe even follow along in this video with me if you want. Now that we did Linkin Park, I want to hop into Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, Jordan Fish is no longer with Bring Me the Horizon, but there are certain things that they were really known for using sounds that he had. Uh, he used the Nord 4, which is actually really good for getting Linkin Park style sounds. And he was also big on using Serum, which makes a lot of sense because it has tons of flexibility. I don't personally use Serum, so I'm going to show you guys how to do this with something in my collection. And you'll be able to do this with anything. Just kind of follow along and you'll understand. So let's get into that right now. All right, so let's jump into this Bring Me The Horizon recreation, right? My friend said to use Silent or Silent or however you want to pronounce it for this. So I downloaded the demo that way. I don't want to use any fancy stuff, just something I can like pull up that anybody else could like go do if they needed to, right? So I pulled up Silent and we're going to listen to it because it's midi out here. All right, first thing, that's a sine wave. Um, we're going to want to switch that to a uh, saw, most likely. Saw is pretty solid here. Uh, actually, let's not get the distortion yet. Uh, let me listen to a pulse, actually. I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with the saw for this one. I think it sounds really close to the original. Let's turn up. Uh, well, actually, let's let's let this with this filter a little bit. Okay, and now we're gonna add some delay and reverb here. All right, get in there. Now we're gonna add some distortion. New plugin, JST Heat. Make sure to cop that, link's in the description below, but I'm gonna show you why you would want something like that. Wow. Okay. That totally took it from where it was started at. Like, listen before that. It's like a completely different synthesizer, right? Um, but I'm going to go back to Slip now. I think I'm going to go back to a, to a quarter pulse. Dope. And now uh, we're just going to mess with a little bit of EQ. That kind of, you know, brings out the top end and the mid range. Um, and you can listen with or without it. And just that quick, we have a Bring Me The Horizon style synth. So you could do this with something you could just download a demo of. Um, it's pretty dope, actually. I'm probably going to dig more into this one, but let's get to the next one. At this point, we have knocked out Bring Me The Horizon and Linkin Park. So I want to get into Spirit Box right now. If you guys have been watching the channel for a while, I'm sure you guys have seen my how to write a song like Spirit Box in which I go through writing one from beginning to end. Now there's a synth that I used in there and I'm going to show you guys how adding distortion to that will make it sound even more like something that they would be using. More so adding saturation, but let's hop into that because it doesn't make sense for me to go through and recreate an entire patch when I've already kind of done that work, right? So let's hop in and see how good of a sound design we can do by using very minimal things. All right, so we're gonna get into Spirit Box. Um, I've already done a song like Spirit Box before, so let's actually play a clip of that really quickly. The intro synth I used from that was from Nexus. Um, and I'm gonna show you right now just some of the different ways you could distort 
the intro, not just the synth, but like kind of a whole song, right? And we're going to use JST Heat to do that. So let's listen to it and see what we can do with the modes so we go through it. Just that alone sounds great to me, right? But let's try a couple of other couple other modes. I was using vocal warmth on a couple of the other examples, so let's try that here. It's bringing so much of the song out that wasn't there before. The synths are coming alive in a way that they just just weren't. I wish I would have did this on the original one, but you know, it didn't exist. Let's try something else. All right, that's too much <laughs> for this specific thing. Once again, without and with. Honestly, just a beautiful thing all together. This really goes to show just how much you can do with nothing but saturation and distortion on keys, on mix, whatever. Sounds great in a lot of these modes. Um, This was my favorite of the bunch for this particular song. Yeah, experiment with this thing. Uh, there's a trial for it, so definitely go in the comments below, download your copy of it. I'm just glad that we finally have a plugin that's capable of adding saturation and distortion in a very smooth and organic feeling way. You know, it almost seems like tube distortion at certain points, like that you're getting from second order harmonics. And I feel like this mode has like second and third order harmonics, but overall just absolutely awesome. Uh, on to the next thing. Now that we've knocked that out, I think that it's gonna be a lot of fun to go into the world of Sleep Token. You guys have seen me hop into this world before too with my how to write a song like Sleep Token, but now we're going to create an all original synth that is reminiscent of what Sleep Token is doing. Because the whole concept of this is you should be able to do this with anything that you guys have. And I know most people are going to have like, you know, the Arturia 5 collection or something simple like Salenth or Massive or something, you know, we're, we're not going to go through and use some thousand dollar synthesizer to do this. We're going to do it with tools that people have pretty readily available. So let's go create something. All right. So let's get into Sleep Token. Uh, we're going to do Alkaline. And if you listen to the intro of it, to me, it sounds like it's a harp style synth or harpsichord, however you pronounce that. Can't play too much of that, you know the rules, but yeah, that sounds like it also has a pluck on the first note. Um, you could do something like that with a transient designer or adding a little pluck underneath, but that's not super important right now. Right now, let's listen to some harpsichords off Analog Lab Pro. I love this synth. It's great for getting quick and dirty with stuff if you can recognize the sound. Nah, that's not it. Let's scroll through a few. There you go. A little bit more haunting sounding, um, just overall more distorted. Uh, let's add a little bit of JST heat. I'm telling you, saturation and distortion is pretty much everything when it comes to making synth sounds in this genre, so. Let's go to Howard Benson vocals. I think we have the width on already. Um, let me show you what that was like without it. And now we'll just add some reverb. And 
And JSTQ was just doing a little bit of a bump at the bottom, but yeah, that's pretty much how quickly you can get to something like Sleep Token with nothing but distortion and a little bit of reverb. I'm not gonna lie, I'm feeling really accomplished at this point. We have gone through and recreated some of my favorite stuff ever. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching this video. I feel like if you don't know by now how important and integral it is to have sound design as part of your production when you're mixing or writing in this genre, you're missing the mark. The biggest and best are doing it and now you kind of know that you can do this regardless of the tools you have. They don't have access to anything that you don't most of the time, or at least some kind of recreation of it. So this was a fun little exercise, but yeah, the one thing that these bands had in common to me was, you know, besides the obvious distorted guitar is like, is saturated synth sounds. And I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed running through it. Do you feel like I nailed any of those recreations? Would you like me to do this again for another group of bands? Leave it in the comments below and I'll chat with you fine people like I always do.